Hi, it's Tate. I'm going to give you a tour of WeChat. WeChat is China's super app. If you're doing any marketing or sales in China, you'll definitely need it, but you'll also need it just if you're traveling in China or have friends there. Basically, everybody there uses it. At least everybody I know that is age 70 or younger in China uses WeChat. 1.15 billion monthly active users overall. And it started out just as a simple chat app. It was just directly like Kick when it first came out. Here's an example of a chat. Here's one with my wife here. Um, it's just text, images. Note that it doesn't tell you if somebody re received the message or not, which I think is a good design choice, actually. But it has a couple extra things that I can do here. One that is popular in China, for example, is this red packet. I could send her some money. I could send her eight doll eight yuan because her uh, birthday is coming up here. And this shows me WeChat Pay. Now I'm going to show you more about WeChat Pay later. But basically, I have a wallet in here with real money. I've sent her the payment there. The reason they use this red packet format is because for um, in Chinese tradition during their holidays, they'll often use, they'll give each other physical red packets with money in them. She already opened it there, by the way. Now, let's take a look at moments. When I go in here, I can find these, oh, she said thanks. Okay, good. Um, I can check these moments. And this is kind of a Instagram-like format where I can see what's going on in the lives of my friends. They tend to post a lot of content that is from their personal lives, but also um, just updates about their business or what they're up to do. Um, they also share some special discounts or sales that they've found. Now, on any of these posts, people can add comments, but this isn't a super open open platform. It's not like Weibo or Twitter or Facebook, really, where things on here are likely to go very viral. Um, the conversations that I have my friends with my friends on here are more private in nature. Next, let's take a quick look at QR codes. Now, I went into my section here about me and open up this QR code. This is my own QR code. And if I meet somebody new in China and we want to stay connected, what we'll do is I'll give them my QR code and they'll scan it or the other way around. For business, we'd probably use business cards too, but we definitely use this, this WeChat feature. QR codes are used all over China too, not just for this. I'll show you some more coming up here. Next, let's check out some of these articles. Now, what I have here in my chat, you might notice these aren't all people that are in my chats. Some of them are brands. So there's two types of brand accounts, two types of official brand accounts. One's a service account and one's a subscription account. This one here says Gliar, Greer, school. This is an official account for a school that we promote. When I click into it, I can see content that they've been posting lately. I can just pick one and it will show me this article or post you could call it. And it has kind of a special format to it. The style that people use for WeChat articles usually is it has a lot of images and text in short blocks, sometimes little videos within them too. And ample formatting. You can kind of get a feel for it by looking at it here, right? This would be like the equivalent of uh, following their newsletter, for example. But nobody in China really uses emails very much, or they just they just use emails less. So they're more likely to use WeChat to follow brands that they're interested in. Here on their official account, you can also see that there's a menu at the bottom. There's a couple things that we could do here. I could click through any of these links, and these links might link to um, messages or articles, or they might link out to other websites too. There's one more thing that I can do here. I can also use this keyboard to start a conversation directly with this account. 
Once I start the conversation, they can respond to me for a bit and actually it's up to five days. After that, they can't keep using this method to continuously contact me. This gives the um, customers a bit of control over their conversation with brands, which they like better than, for example, giving out their email address and then receiving emails at, at any time. There's another kind of uh, official account here. It's called the subscription account. And those subscription accounts don't show up in this main chat area, but they will show up here in this subscriptions folder. Now, I just note that I am using a Chinese version of WeChat, but I'm using English language within it now. So this is the same kind of WeChat that people use in China, which is a little different than the WeChat that might be downloaded in other places around the world. Anyways, so here we have subscriptions. And these are all these articles that are coming from different brands that I'm following. Quite similar to those articles we saw before, right? In general, we usually use service accounts for the brands that we're promoting rather than subscriptions. But the benefit for subscription accounts is that they can put out a lot more of these articles than service accounts can. It's useful for, say, magazines or publications that want to publish often. Back to the chat. The other things that we're seeing here um, are group chats. So here's an example, NMG. This is my marketing agency. And this is a like an internal work chat that we're having basically. Although it's not usually very work related, it's more like people sharing memes uh, a lot of the time actually. We have our more serious chat on Slack. And here's another one. This is my, my other business, which is a marketplace for tour guides. And in this case, uh, it's not really an internal work chat, but what it is, is it's these uh, this group of tour guides talking about issues related to being tour guides in, in China. The chats that are going on in these chat rooms are usually very topically specific. The moderators of the chat groups can, they can't control all of the messages, but they can control who gets to stay in the group. And they're usually pretty strict. So if somebody wants to start talking about um, just something random that's not about the chat or they're sharing promotional content, they might get a warning or they might just get kicked down immediately. So actually people in those chat groups tend to be fairly well behaved. Let's check out WeChat Pay. This is very important. Um, if you buy anything in China offline, like say you're at a convenience store or you're at a restaurant or even like you're at a vendor that's, uh, that's selling some rotoir on the side of the street, when it's time to pay, they're going to ask you, just means Alipay or WeChat. And then you will choose. They won't ask for cash because nobody's really paying for anything with cash nowadays in China. In fact, even if you give them cash, they might not actually be able to accept it. Within this area, WeChat Pay, I have a wallet and that shows my balance. I don't keep much balance on there. I also have cards that are connected to it, like bank cards or credit cards. And when it comes time to pay, they might um, ask for this. This is a QR code again, and they'll scan it to get their payment, or they might have a QR code for me to scan. There's also some other neat features here, like I could split the bill with my friends quite easily. And within this area, we can see some of the, some of the major mini apps that are in WeChat now. Uh, now I'm going to tell you about these mini apps, or, or they might be called mini programs now. Um, they have a lot of users on their own. They have some 745 million monthly active users. Here's an example. Ride hailing by Didi. This is like Uber. Now they have an app of their own, but I can also do it within WeChat. This loads up, then I can go ahead and I can get a car. Now I'm in Canada right now. I don't know if this would actually work. Probably not. But it would definitely work when I'm in Nanjing. Let's check just um, 
two more types of mini apps, and then one other feature that I think is going to be quite popular in WeChat in the future. Now, here is my list of mini programs. And one that I've used quite often in Nanjing is this Blue Frog one from Blue Frog Restaurant. Now, I think it's neat that um, this is my favorite hamburger restaurant and it's based in Nanjing, while actually my favorite uh, dim sum restaurant is in Edmonton. That's some good global cooperation there. Within here, I can basically get promotions and I can get deals. I'll get some free foods from some time, sometimes or some free drinks maybe. I can check here what I have available now. They have one promotion here that I'm just gonna get a little bit of food for free. In my experience, sometimes these mini apps and these loyalty programs are worth it and sometimes they're not. Uh, at restaurants in China, there's always gonna be a QR code there and you can scan it and you can get a deal, right? But sometimes I don't wanna become a member of their loyalty program, especially if I don't go to the restaurant often. And then I have all these different uh, mini apps on WeChat usually, or other apps that I use to join these loyalty programs. And I, I ended up just canceling a lot of them and I only keep a few myself. The benefit of a mini app though, over an app mainly, one of the main benefits is that it's very quick loading. It's easy to install too. Let's, let's find a new one that I just added here today. This is a mini app by Jingdong. That's a major e-commerce platform in China. And within it, I can buy all sorts of things. This is going to be a similar experience to their app as well. I mean, their main app. I could go in here and I could make a purchase very easily if I want to go through this process and pay through it via WeChat Pay. So why would people use a WeChat store like this instead of just going on to another app? I asked a bunch of my friends, friends in China, and one of the common reasons that they have is that not everything is actually available on Taobao or Tmall or other Chinese e-commerce platforms. Some stores are only available in these uh, many programs on WeChat. So let's check out one of those little ones. Now, I just messaged a friend of mine here to ask for a specific store that she uses because she says she only uses this on WeChat. Here it is. I'll click it. It's asking for a couple permissions. I allow it. And here we have it. Now that process was a lot easier than going and installing an app from Google Play Store, right? From here, I can go ahead and go through a similar process to make to purchase. Uh, a lot of these different WeChat stores, there are different types, different types of the mini programs, but a lot of them have similar interfaces, especially at the bottom, so that it makes it really easy for people to check out and make their purchase. Let's check out one more thing that could become pretty important soon. Now it is called um, Little Videos or in English it says Channels here. And this is the, the video content. It doesn't look just like Douyin, but it has a similar feel a bit to Douyin or TikTok. I would say it's WeChat's solution to that. They want to make this popular, maybe. We'll see how well it takes off. So I hope you kind of get a feel of what WeChat is like. Um, there are more features in here. I showed you a lot of the ones that I think are most important. But the way I look at it, if a regular app is a fighter jet, then WeChat is an aircraft carrier. And on it, it has a whole bunch of different features and people can go and they can dig in and they can use whatever mini app or connect with whatever brand they want. They can dig in deep and do a lot within WeChat. That's all for now. I'm interested in your feedback too. If you've used WeChat, 
Uh, let us know in the comments about what you think is really important about it. If you have some more questions, leave that too. I'll also leave a link for you to our China Digital Marketing 101 page where you can learn more about marketing for WeChat and a whole bunch of other Chinese platforms. Thanks. See you later.